What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Stella Ray podcast. We are back. We are so back right now. I'm so excited to dive in. I feel like we have so many personal updates. I just feel like I haven't chatted with y'all in a while, but there have also been a few things on my mind, you know, related to the topics that I always discuss on here that you and I always discuss together, self-growth and just how to feel good and how to navigate change and all of that. So let's just dive right in. Sonia and I recently got back from a trip to Brazil. I feel like everyone I told about this didn't really understand like why we were going to Brazil. And I agree, like everyone always seemed very surprised when I told them like, yeah, we're going to Brazil. It's just not your everyday location. You know, it's not like, oh, we're going to Mexico or like, Oh, we're going to London, babes, XX. So if you guys remember, earlier this year in January, I did my first international trip since before COVID. I went to London and Paris, and that was so fun. It's not like I completely caught the traveling bug, but low-key. Like, I was like, ooh, I kind of missed this. But then I was moving and everything in between that, so I was like, okay, I definitely want to go on another trip soon. And for some reason, I just kept seeing all these TikToks and just all these posts about Brazil. And I was just thinking to myself, like that would be such a cool place to go. I was seeing so many beautiful photos. So it was actually crazy. Sonia happened to post on her story, kind of like around the time that I had been thinking about this, that Lana Del Rey was going to be performing for the first time in four years in Rio. She just posted it and was like, oh, like who would want to go to Brazil with me? I know it's like crazy. I will literally go by myself. And I was like, bitch, I've been thinking about going to Brazil. Like I want to go to Rio. So we made it happen. It was so amazing to see Lana. I'm sure you guys have seen the TikToks. I mean, maybe not. I'm sure some of y'all <laughs> have seen the TikToks of her like losing her vape on stage. Bitch, we were there. We saw all of that live. So you guys should definitely check out the Brazil vlog if you haven't. It definitely gives me that nostalgic vibe you know that 2015 2016 vibe when sony and i were traveling together so much and just you know i'm just so grateful for our friendship and it's just so cool to still be able to i mean to still be friends period but also to still be able to travel together and just have so much fun together she came back to new york thank god bro we're gonna meet there and then she was like you know i'm down to like fly to new york and we can fly together from new york so she was staying with me for a couple days after we returned and even just like not really doing that much just chilling hanging out hanging out with my sister like we just have the best time always and i hope everyone can find a friendship like that in their lifetime so brazil was really cool it was really different like i expected than anywhere else i had been there was way less english there was like no english and i had read reviews of the hotel that we stayed at which we stayed at a really nice hotel it was just really nice very clean they had a really good breakfast in the morning it was really beautiful it was like a block away from the beach there were reviews like oh none of the staff spoke english but i definitely just thought that my spanish knowledge would be a little more useful it did come in handy here and there i just didn't really understand how crazy portuguese is as a language it sounds like eight different languages in one I thought it was gonna be a lot more similar to Spanish, which again, some words are. So that's why it's like, I'm confused. And it was so interesting, like at the airport, for example, nobody really spoke English anywhere. Like a few people would, very limited, but for the most part, no one at the airport spoke English. So I thought it was so interesting at the airport, they asked in Portuguese if we spoke Portuguese and we were like, no. And then they were like, do you speak Italian? Like the next language wasn't Spanish, it was Italian. So I thought that was really interesting as well. But yeah, obviously like we were able to get by, you know, it's just interesting to see and like experience how much you can communicate with another person, even when you don't speak the same language. Everyone kept telling us like, oh my God, it's so unsafe there, it's so unsafe there. We were like, I mean, yeah, but like, we're not gonna be out looking for trouble, you know, like. But I will say, like, I definitely, I definitely felt like we were targets. And I think, you know, based on how we look, and whenever we would speak English, I felt like, like, especially just out and about, like walking, walking to different shops and stuff, I definitely felt like speaking English made us a target. There was one instance where actually after the, the festival, the Lana concert, we took the Metro back and then we got food. Everyone was on the Metro, so it felt safe. Like honestly, the Metro felt like the most safe. So we're walking, we get food and we're sitting, it's like on, at a corner and it's like open, you know, it's not like a restaurant. It's kind of like there's a, a counter and then there's like all these tables and chairs, like some inside, half outside, like it's just an open space. And it was probably like 9 PM. So we're sitting waiting for our food, we get our food. Our hotel is literally down the block. So as soon as we exit this restaurant and like turn to start walking towards our hotel, this guy and this girl like, they were probably in their 30s, 40s, 
walk diagonally from across the street at us, like mad aggressive. They were speaking, the guy was speaking in Portuguese like at us. I had no idea obviously what he was saying. Sonia just takes off running and I start running after her. <laughs> Everything happened so fast. I didn't even really process it till later. Like bro, that could have been a bad situation, you know? And I bet they heard us and saw us while we were in that restaurant, kind of peeped that we, you know, were tourists, American, like didn't speak, you know, spoke English. Um, so that was like our craziest moment, but otherwise like we just kept our phones away, didn't have our phones out, which also made it a little hard to vlog and just like do content. Or like if a friend would call me, I would have to wait. If we were out and about, like I would wait till we were in a shop or something to call them back or answer the call. So yeah, it was definitely different as far as that goes. Cause I feel like, especially in New York, like people will be like, oh my God, like someone from a random little town will be like, oh my God, New York is so unsafe, like a big city, oh my God. But it's like, bro, you can have your phone out most of the time, you know? We did go out one of the nights, you know, other than the concert. Sonia had a friend who took us to, I think it was like a gay area, but we went to this gay bar and it was early. Like we got out of there by 10 PM. I think we were back at the hotel. Uh, but it was really lit, you know, for being that early. And it was cool to experience a little nightlife. And we definitely felt safer being with a local. We also couldn't really fully relax. Like it wasn't like being at a resort or something because we just had to be on guard a lot of the time. So I'm really glad to have experienced it. I'm not like in love with the place. Like some places I go and I'm just like, oh my God, like I wanna come back here ASAP. Like I used to feel that way about New York before I lived here. I mean, I used to still, like feel that way, but you know, when I would visit, I'd be like, oh my God, like you just feel like this connection to a place. And I feel that way about Paris. Like when I go to Paris, I'm like, oh my God, I think I was telling you guys like with London, this was my first year going to London. I didn't like, like it was cool. I would go back, but like, I wasn't like, oh my God. But like Paris, I'm like, oh my God. Like just walking down the street. I'm like this, like, I love this. But yeah, I did not feel that way about Rio, no offense. <laughs> I would go back if I had a reason to go back, but I'm not gonna go out of my way necessarily. But it definitely made me want to go to a Spanish speaking country. I haven't even really fully been to Mexico y'all because it gave me like a little bit of confidence, you know, just with Spanish. That was that, let me know if you have any cues, you can message me, you know, if you're going to Rio. <laughs> it was also cool to be there at the same time as Lana and just see like, oh, Lana Del Rey was at the beach today or like Lana Del Rey at Christ the Redeemer. And it's like, oh my God, we were there yesterday. For the main topic today, I wanted to chat about embracing change and just learning how to thrive in your life. Something I've been thinking about a lot recently, as far as just embracing change and getting through times of uncertainty or anxiety, whether it's about something in particular, like maybe you're moving, maybe you're you know, about to graduate, maybe you're starting a new job, maybe you just went through a breakup or some kind of, you know, big life change it could even be a small life change you know or even if you're just feeling like anxious and you don't necessarily know why this kind of relates to what i have talked about earlier this year as far as the you know embarrassment is just a feeling like when you're trying something new and you just feel insecure about it or embarrassed it's like that's just a feeling which not to say that can't affect you so much but once you realize like oh it's just a feeling like if i look stupid and i feel like ashamed about it or embarrassed it's like that's just a feeling i can get through that okay this might be really obvious but i feel like just thinking about this fully really made a big impact in how i see just my life and making decisions and things so the concept is everything around you is going to fall into place and you are going to make the best clearest decisions when you feel good i think especially when you're experiencing anxiety about a relationship or just about something you know external that maybe you can't control there's often this you know feeling we have where we need to control or like grasp hold on to you know we feel insecure we feel anxious about something so we want to act on that and this is not a toxic positivity i must feel good all the time and therefore everything around me will be good it's not about trying to make everything good all the time it's about making decisions that will support your best interests and support yourself your best self people are gonna do what they're gonna do you know things are gonna happen how they're gonna happen and so it's like you don't need to fear it's almost like you don't need to fear being mistreated or being in a bad situation because you trust yourself enough to navigate through that or to get yourself out of that situation and so ways that we can feel good within ourselves are just the basic things bro are you getting enough sleep are you eating enough are you getting exercise getting outside how can i best build self-trust for myself right now 
and how can I best feel supported right now? And I think also reminding yourself that life is always changing. So when you're stressed about something, it's like, oh, it's not even gonna be like this forever, you know? And that's also a good way to motivate yourself to start something, whether it's like a fitness journey or like wanting to do this or that, whatever your goals may be. It's like, okay, the time's gonna pass either way. So would you rather six months go by and you haven't started or you could have six months of progress, you know? Not to be like hashtag motivational quotes, like <laughs> at motivational quotes on you, but it's true. So putting yourself first is very important and having, cultivating that self-trust I think leads to so much confidence. For example, let's use like a situation ship. If you're talking to somebody, you're getting to know somebody and you start noticing maybe some red flags or you start feeling like anxious. Maybe you have an, an anxious attachment style and you start to feel like anxious over the relationship. If you are not coming from a place of self-trust, if you're coming from a place of insecurity or you, you know, you feel insecure and you act on that rather than, okay, I'm feeling insecure. Let's like reflect first you might do irrational things or stay in a situation that's not good for you or not communicate about what you're feeling or things you may have issues with versus if you have that self-confidence and self-trust you could be in the exact same situation but because you are like okay i'm gonna choose myself i'm going to choose the route that is going to best uplift me and make me feel the best you know the end result is going to be so much more different you know it could be you ask your situation ship, what are we? It could be you leave a situation that you kind of realize is no longer for you because you, even though it may be hard, you know that this is the best thing for yourself long-term. So it's not about, you know, avoiding bad situations or bad situations or, you know, situations where there's maybe some risk or just, you know, you can't control the outcome. It's not about trying to make everything perfect all the time and controlling everything. It's like, I trust myself to make the best decisions for me so I could be in... I don't want to say every situation, but I could be in a lot of different situations and I'm going to know how to deal. Bro, life is never going to be perfect, you know? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's always changing. And so learning how to get through those changes, I think is so key to not, you know, and just being able to remind yourself, like step back and remind yourself, okay, this isn't forever. Learning how to regulate your nervous system, learning how to self-regulate is so important. And it's really hard because I feel like a lot of us have, you know, issues. <laughs> Most people, I feel, were not brought up in a way where they were perfectly emotionally supported all the time, you know? So that's why we are all, like, fucked up and in these weird, like, situationships and no one knows how to communicate their feelings effectively and people lie. It's so hard for people to be straight up. So it's, like, a lot to learn. And I think I was talking about in the last podcast episode from a couple weeks ago. You can only do so much healing in isolation, you know? It's like once you get into a relationship or decide to be a little more honest and vulnerable in an existing friendship, that is when so much of yourself and like your issues <laughs> and just things that you need to heal and work on come to the surface or start to come to the surface because you have that mirror reflecting you and people's behavior is going to trigger you, you know, and it's going to look different for everyone and obviously varying degrees for everyone. Um, but that's definitely been like a big realization of mine this year. <laughs> you know, when you think you've done a lot of healing and not, not to discredit that, but then it's like you open up like a whole nother layer or like level of shit like you open the box oh i didn't even know this was in there but like i guess it's good we're confronting it um also i think a good sign of healing especially if you're more avoidant someone like me is feeling just more intensely feeling your emotions more intensely or just feeling more in general i think it's super interesting also thinking about people who maybe are very aggressive in interactions i used to be like oh my god i wish i could just be more like like the grass is always greener you know it's like oh i wish i could just be more confrontational i wish that was my thing to work on instead of like being you know just avoidant and like afraid of conflict but it's like being overly aggressive that's just another way to avoid real emotional confrontation and like vulnerability you know and it's said so many times you know like anger is usually sadness or grief just masked like it's easier to just feel angry about something and i think for men that's especially true like anger is the only emotion that men are really allowed to express so that's why we have the society we have today so yeah i would love to hear your thoughts on that what do you do to best support yourself to build self-trust to build self-confidence and in what circumstances how do you feel 
when you are making decisions that best support you long term. Okay, so because I haven't done an episode in a while, I did want to go, I did ask you guys to send me some cues. So I did want to go through those. How do you deal with stress? So one of my main issues is like perfectionism. And I think a lot of oldest children, oldest daughters especially deal with this. I think for most of my life, it's like I always... <laughs> just like opening up hours, I've always looked very put together. You know, I know how to appear very put together and like I'm on top of everything because I am on top of shit a lot of the time. Like why was I making how I stay productive videos at age like 14, you know? So I often internalize a lot of my stress, you know? And so I think a big thing for me has been learning how to ask for help and learning how to self-regulate and learning how to cope with my stress in like healthier ways so i think something that's helped a lot is like talking about it more journaling learning how to identify my emotions knowing when to take a break knowing when something is okay as it is and not trying to make it perfect asking for help i think i said that i think the best way to easier deal with stress is to just kind of observe how you deal with stress currently you know for some people they're very like external about it so that's going to look differently but it's like that doesn't mean it's like healthy so Knowing where you're at and then like going from there, I think is probably the best way. How to find meaningful friendships and grow with them. I feel like all my close friendships have just happened very naturally. It's always been like friend of a friend or I just ran into someone randomly or like me and Sonia, you know, we went to school together. So that's like an obvious place. But I think especially when people get to be adults and older, like it, it can be harder to make friends. So that's why I think it's important to like do shit and i i'm like i need to start doing that you know we're moved we're a little more settled now i want to start doing more like classes and just like activities because at first i was like oh my god we just moved i have so much other shit to worry about like i'll do that later but i want to start doing that so if y'all have any recommendations in new york city for just classes places to meet fellow girlies lmk but yeah we just need more third spaces you know but i think what's the number one thing it's like just what's the word like seeing someone over and over so if you always go to the same coffee shop like you just can't be afraid to say hi you know maybe you follow each other on ig like oh like let me get your instagram and then like following up like hey do you want to like hang out do you want to go to this event with me do you want to like do this and that as far as growing with somebody i think you just can't be afraid or if you are afraid you have to push through the fear you can't be afraid to be vulnerable with people and i think my closest friends i have they are my friends, my closest, closest friends, because we have had disagreements and we've worked through them and we have, you know, gone through shit together, and, but we were both willing to listen. We were both willing to be there for each other. And like, ultimately we put the friendship over any disagreement versus, you know, I've had other friends where I didn't speak up about something until it was kind of too late or, you know, both or neither of us or only one of us was willing to be vulnerable. Um, and you can't really build like a really solid friendship off of that But I think it's also important to remember that not everyone is gonna be your best closest friend and that's okay You know, you don't have to like have the most deep vulnerable relationship with everyone You don't and I think trying to force that is weird And I think it's so weird when people are like I hate small talk because like maybe you should just grow some social skills Babe because like this world runs off of small talk stop trying to force deep conversations with someone you don't know that well Like it's weird. I hate that it's like, <laughs> and they're always like I want to talk about aliens. It's like I think everything's been said. How much more can you say about that? Like, so yeah, just like be open and like see where things go with people, you know, but just like you can't be afraid to be real. What is your opinion on the statement perfectionism is procrastination in disguise? So I read this when the person submitted it, but wouldn't it be like procrastination is perfectionism in disguise? Because I feel like pr um, procrastination is usually a little more talked about and like almost socially acceptable, you know? And I think also perfectionism is often used the wrong way. I feel like, you know, at least for myself, I didn't even know I was a perfectionist until the last year or so, because I always just thought the perfectionist was like the person in school who had really good handwriting or like, oh my God, like I'm just not gonna do it until it's perfect. I, it needs to be perfect. And I'd be like, oh my God, can this bitch just like get it together? Their like poster that would be in the hallway was always like the most neat, you know? but perfectionism actually is so much more deep than that and it's so much more of an emotional thing there's often a lot of shame tied to it and you base your your self-worth on you know other people's approval and what you can produce or what you do and especially what you do for other people so i think often people will procrastinate something because you know it's like you're burnt out you don't want to face the uncomfortable emotions that come with 
starting something, whether it's like a project or again, like a fitness journey. So I feel like procrastination is often perfectionism in disguise, not the other way around. It's gonna manifest as procrastination, but it's gonna be perfectionism at the core of it. And I guess at the core of it, it's not even perfectionism. It's like not wanting to face something like shame, like fear or discomfort of uncomfortable emotions. Where do you find your memes? Um, usually Twitter or TikTok. <laughs> like I will get the slideshows of the memes. That's like, honestly, most of the time that's the only reason I wanna watch TikTok. Like I don't, I hate, this is like so cliche at this point, but I hate when I just want some light entertainment and then my whole For You page is like therapy videos and like all this deep ass shit. And it's like, I just want a quick LOL as I eat my breakfast you know or whatever differences between visiting and living in nyc what did you idealize and now you're like okay never mind i tweeted this the other day but i obviously when i would visit here i was living the yolo lifestyle and the yolo lifestyle is just like that vibe of you're just kind of down for whatever you're not sticking to a strict schedule like when i'm not living the yolo lifestyle i'm very much get up at a certain time be at the gym by a certain time plan on, like most all my meals usually this, that, like be very organized, get to bed at a reasonable hour. So the YOLO lifestyle is a little more like go with the flow. We're prioritizing basically having fun over and vibes over health and structure. So I guess I just honestly didn't really realize that your life, it's very easy to just live the YOLO lifestyle, <laughs> but it's like, babe, I'm not on vacation. Like this is life. So it's been, <laughs> it's been an adjustment. But I think that's okay too, especially having first moved here, especially after living at home for a few months and really like not being social at all or making any new memes. Like, I mean, I had a good time with my family, but you know what I mean? Like that's not the YOLO lifestyle. But I feel like in general, most things, like I, I made the most perfect decision. I'm so much happier now than I was in LA, especially living with somebody again and just being around people more has been such like it's been, just been so much better. What do you do when a guy refuses to see his wrongs? I'm his seventh girl and want to leave too. He's nice though. Okay, like you can't, babes, like you cannot and you should not try to change a man. You have to accept them where they're at. And if you can't do that, if you find yourself wanting to change them or like I could help, I could help him, I could improve his life. No, that is not your job. Just as far as like a, a person, like on a person to person level, that's not your job. You can't change anybody. But especially as far as like a, a dating dynamic, um, a woman dating a man dynamic, that's not very like feminine energy, you know? And like, I think it's really true. Like he's not gonna respect the woman that does that. So sprinkle, sprinkle, like you just have to be very feminine and accept someone where they're at. Like if a man's not doing what you want them to do, find another one or you know just enjoy what you can out of it and you know let it run its course but don't try to change a man just leave him like because that's where he's at and if that's not what you want and that's not aligned with you and it's bothering you like don't stay and try to fix him go find someone else who already has that there's so many people in this world you know how to get over being cheated on and trust issues um i would say read a lot of books <laughs> read the attached book um ask yourself what drew you to that person and learn how to self-regulate. And don't date again until you're ready, you know? Okay, last question I'm gonna answer. And I'm feeling so allergic, so I'm gonna go after this. But what do you and your sister usually fight about? And how do you solve disagreements? We will fight about like everything, like literally everything. And it was such a big indicator. Like I, it was really reflected to me when Sonia was here and she had to witness all of our arguing. <laughs> But it's like funny shit. Like we will be arguing about the stupidest shit and then we'll start laughing, you know? Um, Cause it's just that person, like if you have a sibling, you know, like you can just be completely yourself around them. You don't have to care about being polite, you know? Like, I mean, obviously that doesn't mean we disrespect each other. I mean, sometimes we do, but like, you know, it's just that sibling vibe. Um, but I feel like in general, if we are arguing or have a disagreement over like a big issue, we're both pretty good about talking it out. And you know, we like, will follow the same therapist on IG. So like we have a good understanding of like how to resolve a conflict. So I'm grateful for that. And I think if we didn't have that, it would definitely be hard to live together. So that's going to be it for this week's episode. We are back y'all, we back, we up. So I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you want me to talk about in next week's episode. And don't forget to share this on your IG story. Love you guys so much. And I will see you next week. Bye everyone.